Hello and welcome to Summer Storytelling. I'm Sherry Rita from Wilmette Public Library and I will be here every week during the summer session to tell you some stories. This one is a story about how you never know what you can do. Hangan is proof of that. He lived a long time ago, but not in fairy tale time, in the time of the Tang Dynasty in China. That was China's golden age of arts and culture. Han Gan and his family lived in the town of Chang'an, which was a town named after everlasting peace. Han Gan loved to draw, but he didn't get to draw much because his family was po too poor to provide him even with ink and brushes, even with paper. So mostly Han Gan worked as a delivery boy for a local innkeeper. He delivered meals to the, to the people who called the innkeeper and ordered food, just like we order food today. One day, the innkeeper sent him to the house of the great painter Wang Wei. Han Gan entered that house and he was just amazed by all the beautiful paintings. He was so inspired that the minute he got outside, he stooped down on the ground and sketched the horses in Wan Wei's yard. The great painter watched him do that and he got a very kind idea. The next day, he ordered from the innkeeper again and when Han Gan showed up, he gave him a package of ink and brushes and paper and even some coins. And, and he said to him, here, this is so that you can draw as much as you like. And the coins are so you can buy more and you'll never run out. <laughs> Han Gan was overjoyed. What a gift this painter and his horses have given me, he thought. So he took his materials home. And from then on, from morning to night, Han Gan drew horses. He drew them standing and resting and bathing and galloping. And his horses were so well drawn that, that the emperor invited him to join the Royal Academy of Painting. Now the Royal Academy, they taught painters how to, how to draw all kinds of things in all kinds of ways, but Han Gan would draw nothing but horses. He drew them standing and sitting and galloping and resting, and bathing, but always tethered. And, and one day, one of his classmates asked him, Han Gan, why do you always draw your horses tethered? And Han Gan said, because someday my horses are going to be so lifelike that if they're not tied, they will leap off the page. Han Gan's classmate laughed and so did Han Gan. But from that day on, rumors spread about Han Gan's glorious horses. And one night, years later, Han Gan was working late at night at his studio, and he heard this pounding at the door. He opened it, and there was a Tang, -tang warrior standing in the doorway. The enemy is at the gates, the warrior said. I need a strong and spirited stallion that I can ride. I have heard that your horses are magical, that they can come to life. Can you bring to life the most glorious horse that was ever made? Angan reflected. I can try, he said. And he did, he set to work drawing the most brilliant, glorious, horse he could imagine, a horse that could protect the dynasty. And when he was done, he had indeed drawn a, a glorious horse. It, it was strong and, and, and had gorgeous lines and it seemed to prance almost off the page. But of course, it didn't leave the silken scroll on which it was painted. And the warrior was very disappointed and you know, so was Han Gan. I'm sorry, he said. I did my best. Obviously, nothing I do is worth anything. It's just for the fit for the flames. 
and he took his scroll and he threw it outside and he set it ablaze. And then the most amazing thing happened. A stallion leapt out of the flames. Oh, said the warrior, and he jumped aboard the stallion and the horse and rider ran off into the distance. Hans, Hangan's horse was indeed magical. It was sure-footed and strong. It never needed food or, or rest or drink. And it made its rider feel magical too. Together, the horse and the rider outran arrows and escaped all people who tried to chase them. They never lost a battle. But this never losing business was not really so good for the warrior. It went to his head, you know, and he started picking fights when there weren't any and finding enemies when there weren't any and starting battles. And with every battle, he went on and on until everybody around him was hurt or killed and even his horse would cry. One night, at the end of a long and vicious battle. That horse reared up and threw the warrior. Covered in sweat and blood, he whinnied and neighed and ran off. And the warrior ran after him, but he couldn't catch that horse. He looked for the horse for days and days and weeks and weeks and months and eventually found himself at the door of Han Gan. He pounded at the door. Han Gan answered and he said, the horse you painted me has disappeared. Have you seen him? Yes, I have, said Han Gan. Well, where is he? He demanded. Han Gan turned back to his painting. Well, said the warrior. He's here, said Han Gan. I painted this painting of mine with five horses. When I woke up this morning, there were six. The, the warrior peered at the painting and he saw bowed, but still strong and noble. His horse covered in blood and sweat. He lives here with me now, said Hangan. He will live in peace. I suggest you find a way to do the same. All this happened a very long time ago. Back in the, it's said to have happened back in the 700s, which is also back when Ghana had an empire in Africa and the Roman Empire was tearing into two. And the Vikings were coming down from Germany. And the Mayan Empire was in full bloom and the Tang Dynasty dealt with skirmishes all around its edges. All those battles have long faded. You know, it's the art and the culture that people admire. So if you want to see some of the famous horses of Han Gan, you can find them at the China Museum online. And then maybe see how you can use art, painting or drawing or poems or stories or acting or music to bring something to life. And I'll see you next time for the next story. So long, kids. <laughs>